Hi, my name's John. Welcome to a short video all about the Extreme scanning camera. This camera enables you to draw around the part, then scan it in the computer and do a direct cut out from there or modify the drawing however you want. It's really good if you need a part quickly or if you can't draw it. When I first saw it, I thought it was sort of not sure, but now I've started to use it a little bit, it really is a good bit of kit. I'm not going to go into the technical side of things because I don't know how it works myself. I'm just going to do a practical demonstration of what it's capable of doing. Anyway, let's get on with the video, make some sparks. The early cameras used to mount on here, but now they mount on there, really close into the reel, so there's as little deflection as possible. This is the modified assembly on here as well, much more rigid than the original one. So that's where the camera goes. That's the camera. Basically it's a little electronic microscope. That goes into there. That little grub screw nips up. And that's basically how the camera is installed. I'm going to say it now, I'll probably say it again. Don't use the plasma for cutting when the camera's there. It's not really designed to withstand heat and smoke like that. The Scan Anything program works inside Mac 3. You can see I've got the Mac 3 screen up and that's the little screen there of the Scan Anything program. I'm going to concentrate on that. Before the camera is used, it needs to be calibrated. You simply print off a sheet of paper, which basically a plan memory of the computer. Looking on the computer screen, we can see the little black dot, and that's where the camera is. So if we move the camera down by using the XY controls on here, right, so now it's basically locked onto there. If we click calibration, run, it will start calibrating itself. It moves around and chases that around until it's happy and knows where it's going. Don't know how or why it does it, but it certainly does it. Right, it's happy now, it's locked on. So the camera is now dead in the centre of that little black dot. It's basically ready now to trace a drone. I'm going to get it to trace the test square that comes on the test piece of paper. So once again, there's the camera. So we'll move things across. Right, it's latched onto the outside of the drone. You could have it on the inside or the outside, depending on how you traced it. So from there, that's on edge following, following, click run, and it follows the drone around. This is a nice clear crystal clear drone, and obviously you can follow it no problem at all. If the drones are a little bit big, there's various controls you can use to try and sharpen things up. We'll go to there, yeah. Right, so it's following the drone. Do I want to see if this traced edge? Right, the file's been saved to the desktop, a square one, so we can remove these, remove that one. And if we open sheet cam, in sheet cam we open the drone, import drone, square one, there it is, open. Basically that's our square. It's a little bit wonky in places but that is vastly greater than the, the piece that we traced so it's, it's scaling up considerably. You could if you wanted to import that into a, a card drone and put holes in it or square it up. It's basically drawn that shape and it's done a good representation of it. I need to make a blanking plate for the end of this turbocharger with a hole in there for a jet pipe. This is part of a project for a home-built gas turbine engine. 
I wouldn't need to try and draw that shape out but I should be able to trace it quite easily and then scan it and cut one out. I'm using a pencil to try to get it in nice and tight and then I'll probably go around it with a, a sharp your felt tip pen just to finish it off. I can't get all of it but the bits I can't get I can just pencil in freehand. I could mark the holes and cut them but it would be quite a simple matter to use a transfer punch once we get the part cut out. It's going to be stainless and I'll be able to drill it quite easily. You often find when you cut stainless with plasma it can go quite hard. Right, so we've got a, a decent representation. There's one or two little bits that I'm missing. We can just fill these in, in by hand, just blend them in. And we'll be cutting on the inside of this line. So that's basically the shape. I'm going to go around it with a, a sharpie pen now to make it a real definite take your time because the better the, the better the tracing the better the, the finished result's going to be. Right. <coughs> Next thing is we need the, this hole here. That's the size of pipe I need to fit through there. I need to cut on the inside of this line to get a hole that that pipe will fit into. So it's inside of a hole in this particular case and inside of the outer drone. I put the drone underneath the camera. You can see that's one, like one of the little logs with a, a big bolt hole in there somewhere. There is various adjustments you can make all these adjustments here that's the original image that's a processed image and that's what they call mask that's probably the one I'll use it gives the best definition between light and dark you can play around with these various controls here until you get something that you actually feel like it's going to work once again that's the camera in the centre there so I'm going to move the drone across Till it locks onto the inside of that because we traced around the outside so we need to be on the inside you can see there's a little there's little bits where it's not perfect but this is blown up considerably compared to the original size right so basically we'll click run and it's following the contour Right, so it's just the inside of that drone. Do we want to save the traced edge? Yes, we do. Right, next we need to trace the hole. Right, so it's on the inside, edge following wood, run. And we'll drill round the outside of the pipe so the hole needs to be the inside size. <coughs> Do we want to see if this traced edge? Yes. So if we now go into file, save, 
give it a name and call it Turbo One. Save it to desktop. Save. So if we reduce this and that, open up sheet cam, file, import role. That's it there, desktop turbo one. Okay. Right there it is. Now that's a direct copy DFX file that you can cut out. You could put it into your card program and you could tidy that circle up, you could make the circle a lot neater. But I'm gonna weld the pipe in there so basically that's good enough for what I want. So click across here. The material is gonna be Ten gauge stainless. Use all the factory settings. Cut it forty five amps. Okay. So that's drawn the path I was gonna cut. From there. Need to create a top fail turbo wall save. Okay. Right from there, load J code, turbo one, okay. Right, so it's brought the shape into Mac 3, ready to be cut. Very little flash on the back of that, it'll take nothing to see the that's, that's basically as cut there, and that's with a little light where your wheel work. And that's, that's pretty good. I'm very pleased with that. Nice neat weld round there. I'll punch those holes through first. I'm quite happy with that. 